Hi mga ka CSA, my name is Mar Virches, I'm 20 years old and I'm from Makati City. I'm a senior high student and nandito ako ngayon sa CSA Derm Center kay Dr. Contessa to have my non-surgical nose job. And isa ako sa mga sumusubaybay sa mga video ni Dr. Contessa and masasabi kong sobrang nice dito ng mga nagagawa ni Dr. Contessa. And yun napapanood ko, sobrang satisfying for me. That's why po, napunta po ako dito kay Dr. Contessa. Nag-appointment uh, nag, nag po agad kami para po magawa po yung pinapangarap ko kong nose. Kaya kung gusto niyong gumanda ang inyong ilong at, ma, at makamtan niyong pinapangarap niyong itsura, ay pumisita na kayo dito sa CSA Dorm Center. And, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell to keep you posted. Good day everyone, welcome to the CSA Medical Aesthetics. I'm Dr. Contessa, your Certified Aesthetic Physician. Asians have a relatively low nose, blunt nasal tip, and wider alerts. The nose being located at the center of the face can give an aesthetic balance between the upper and the lower third of the face. That's why nowadays, non-surgical nose procedures are so common. In today's episode, we have a topic again on non-surgical nose enhancement and we'll have a review of the different specific details when it comes to doing your non-surgical nose procedures. So mga kasiyase, let's welcome Mar. Hi Mar. Hi mga kasiyase. Yes, magandang araw. So Mar is just 20 years old. Yes, po. Batang bata pa. So typical Asian nose tayo, ma, right? So a lot of our Asians or particularly Filipinos would want to achieve a certain height of the nose. Yan. So of course naman, we wanted to have this very attractive looking nose. So ano nga ba yung attractively proportioned nose? Okay? Actually, there is no universal parameter that dictates what a perfect or ideal nose is. It varies in different populations. It depends on what cultural background we have, mga beliefs, perceptions, and different ethnicities. Okay, that's why yung iba, actually when I go to the US, the Americans are telling me, you Filipinos have beautiful nose already. Why are you still enhancing your nose? It's already beautiful. See, for them, we have a beautiful nose. But here in the Philippines, we feel like we still don't have that beautiful or attractive nose. So, it's dependent talaga kung ano yung culture, ano yung ethnicity natin. Okay, that's why in this episode, let's have some review yung anatomical parts and at the same time, yung details ng procedures on how to do it. Okay? So, it's very important to do procedures like this um, under qualified professionals and also following the safety rules. Okay, so Mar, yes, excited ako. Excited Kasi po. if you're gonna look at the surface anatomy sa nose ni Mar, so the radix or cellion, which is the lowest part ng ating bridge, this part here between the middle canti of our eyes, kay Mar, we wanted to still elevate that. 
Because in aesthetic medicine, actually, we have rules of ratios and proportions. We follow certain angles. Like for example here, we have the nasofrontal angle. Ideally, it should be 115 to 130 degrees. So yung kaimar here, the radix height is kind of uh, inadequate. So we still have to elevate it. So this part here for Mar, what I'm going to do is to increase the height on the radix portion, right? Kasi dito nga, when we're in a frontal view, parang flat. Flat yung dating ng nose natin. So when it comes to the rinyon already, so take note, the rinyon, some other people have this bump. That's the rinyon part where you have the connection between the bone and the cartilage. So the others have the bump here. But for Mar, so it's not elevated or it's still flat over this part here. And when it comes to this supra tip region, some people have this break here, pero kay Marwala. And when we reach the so called tip defining point, it's kind of um, rounded, blunt, hindi siya pointy, okay? And we go to the infra tip region and the columella. The columella is short. So, in other words, tayong mga Pinoy, we have this flat here, or it's not that elevated, or it has an inadequate projection. And when we assess the alars, ayan. So Asian or Filipino nose tend to have this wide alars here. Okay, so visible yung nostrils natin. Okay, and when we inspect on the nasal spine there, it's also flat. So that's the Asian features. Asian nose features. Okay, unlike yung mga Europeans, mga whites, kita mo sila talagang mataas, pointy, narrow, slim. So that's our dream nose. So sa Asia, in Philippines, that's what we want to have. Correct, Mar? Correct. Po. Gusto mo rin yon? Gusto ko rin po. Okay. <laughs> Gusto ko rin yon. So let's show the actual procedure sa pagbabalik ng CSA Medical Aesthetics. back mga kasiyase so let's have a review of the surface anatomy of our nose so from here we have the radix and cellion or cellion and then as we go inferiorly we have the so-called rinion and then further inferiorly we have a supra tip break here and then the tip defining point and your infra tip to your columella and we have here the wings the so-called alars so on the alars we have the alar facial crease here or the alar groove okay so in terms of the internal features okay we know that the upper third of the nose has the nasal bone okay and then on the lower part we have the cartilage okay so we have the lateral cartilage here and we also have this alar cartilages here the greater and the lesser all our cartilages okay so when it comes to the injections into the nose like we're using fillers also we have to be very careful with the vascular structures so take note of the vascular supply again so we have from here the suprathoracic layer artery and then there's this notch here where there's a vessel that comes out and then that vessel can bring out or we have a branch called the dorsal nasal artery. So those vessels actually originated from our ophthalmic artery, which is a branch of our internal carotid artery. Okay, Mar? So lesson to, dorsal nasal artery. And also, we have a facial artery that goes upward like that. And then there's a branch called angular artery here. And then, actually before the angular artery, it also it will have a branch called the lateral nasal artery. So those are vessels, important vessels that you have to identify whenever we're doing this nose procedure. So again, the lateral nasal artery. And also, the superior labial artery here from our facial artery, it, has, it goes on this upper lip area and actually, it also has a branch going into the columella. So your columellar branches were from your superior legal artery, okay? So take note, in the tip of the nose, there are so many branches there. Anastomosing, 
branches from your dorsal nasal artery, from your lateral nasal artery, from your columellar branches. So these are significant vascular structures that we have to be aware and be careful when you do injections into the nose so you shouldn't damage these vascular structures. And also take note in the radix, there's this intercantal vein. Okay, because some people with thinner skin, they can visualize some veins on their nose. So this intercantal vein here is most of the time when we insert here because we have thin skin on top of the rhinion, sometimes this intercantal vein is being um, like uh, traumatized by the cannula and some people will have some bruising here, which is normal, but the bruise will also go away. So those are significant uh, anatomical structures that you really have to study or review whenever you're doing your nose procedures the non-surgical way okay so after that so we have a markings on the dorsum and the tip and the columella so whenever we do procedures like inserting either filler or the PDO threads so you have to make a marking on the dorsum midline and then also in the infra tip. You have to first identify what will be your entry point. So whenever I augment the nasal bridge, my entry point will always be the infra tip region. Because with the anatomical tissue layers where you insert your filler or your threads, it should be on the deepest plane. Okay, so as a review, the different anatomical tissue layers of the nose, we have the skin, the superficial fatty layer, fibromuscular layer, deep fatty layer, and the perichondrium and periosteum. So when you place your filler or your threads, you have to stay supraperichondrium and supraperiosteum. So those are specific details in doing our non-surgical nose procedures. Okay, so now the actual procedure. Okay, as is with any other procedures you do on the face, you start with cleansing and, of course, disinfecting the area. So we need to sterilize everything. We need to disinfect, sanitize, clean the region. Okay, so you have your, your alcohol, you have your chlorexidine, you have your betadine to totally clean the skin. So it's important to follow our asepsis rule. So after that, we have to identify the entry point, okay? So for dorsum augmentation, the in entry point will be the infratip lobule. At the infratip lobule, I'll be injecting a lidocaine 0.1 to 0.2 to numb this area because we will make a puncture at this site. So now, for puncturing our entry point, the infra tip, we use gauge 18 needle to make the puncture. Okay. So next, next step is to have your cannula be inserted through that entry point and glide it towards the dorsum of the nose, staying midline onto the or uh, above the periosteum and perichondrium, staying midline. Okay. So I have my cannula gauge 25. Okay. And then, I inject slowly my hyaluronic filler to augment from the radix. And then in a linear retrograde treading technique, we're slowly pushing our hyaluronic filler. Okay, next, we want to also augment our columella and upturn our nasal tip. So using the same entry point, I will insert my cannula in between the medial crus of this alar cartilage and push about 0.2 to 0.3 of your hyaluronic filler into the anterior nasal spine. Okay. So, I only insert 0.2 to 0.3 here, and then on the dorsum, you can inject 0.4 to 0.5 of your hyaluronic filler. Next step will be our PDO threads. So, 
I have here a gauge 19 cannula and there's a look of our polydioxanone thread. Okay, so the length of the cannula is about 50 millimeter while the length of your PDO thread is 70 millimeters. So depending on the anatomical length of the dorsum of the nose, you can use 70 millimeter thread, 80 millimeter thread, or even 90 millimeter thread. Okay. Now my cannula is 50 millimeter in length. There's also like others with 60 millimeter length of the cannula. So depending on the on your patient's length of the nose, you can choose the length of your cannula and your threads. So using the same entry point from the infra tip glide our cannula onto the dorsum so again it is on top of the layer 5 so glide it like that up to the radix and pull out and then reinsert another cannula with your PDO you can just glide up to the radix so inserting in a linear manner, staying midline onto the dorsum. So in terms of the number of the PDO threads, it varies among different patients. So some would want to have a higher nose. Some will just want to have minimal elevation. So you have to ask them first, do they want it very obvious or do they want it subtle? So sometimes you experience some resistance there. You can just twitch a little bit your cannula. So for MAR, I can use about 8 to 10 PDO threads on the dorsum of the nose. Because we really want to do an anterior projection of the dorsum of the nose. So we're already on the... How many PDO threads? Seven and then eight. Okay. So for our tip columella projection, I make another entry point for my tip columella augmentation. The main reason is if I still use the same entry point, the infra tip, it's very anterior or rather it's near the upper lip region. Cases could happen like the thread could migrate or be displaced into the inner gingiva or the inner mucosa of the upper lip. So to prevent that, I make another entry point. So about 5 millimeter superior to your infra tip entry point. I make another puncture specifically on the tip defining point. So now I'll use my short PDO threads now. So this is a gauge 19 cannula with a 30 millimeter length of the PDO thread. Or some cases you can use 40 millimeters of their PDO thread. You have, you have to assess the length of the columella also. So for the case of Mar, we have a shorter columella. So I'll use the 30 millimeter PDO thread. So your entry point it should be perpendicular and grasp your columella to make sure that it's between the medial cruise cartilage. Okay, there you go. So just a simple technique like this. So for some cases, I use two PDO threads to five PDO threads. Okay. So grasp the columella and you have to reach the anterior nasal spine. Okay. You have to inform your patient that there's some discomfort, like um, you're feeling it on the upper area, like the incisor fossa. You're feeling something is poking into the gingiva. Okay, so we're done with bridge augmentation and tip columella projection. So we have done the bridge augmentation and the tip columella projection. 
will show the treatment outcome when CSA Aesthetics returns. back so we are now at the treatment outcome part so let's show the result to Mar and let's have our mirror here okay so surprise Mar ito na yan so check on your nose wow <laughs> diba ang ganda do it's very obvious result an instant result I should say natural <laughs> result ayan mangyak ngayon sobrang ganda do okay I feel for Mar <laughs> Diba, Mar? <laughs> Kasi nga, yung istorya natin, tayo, syempre, mga Pilipino, yung sinasabi nila, mga Pinoy, flat nose, broad nose, short nose, tiny nose. Eh, bakit naman hindi natin i-achieve yung high nose na we would want to also have, diba? Ayan, Mar, anong masasabi mo? Sobrang ganda do. Maganda. Mm. Oh, wala Ito lang. Ito ang makapanyuhalang natapad na yung sa tamang pangarap ko. Diba? Oh, Kasi nagsishare si Mar sa akin. Like, yes, it's po. a sad story also na yung people are looking at Mar na yun. Yes, ganyan ka na lang. Parang it's so yung nakaka-down, oh, nakaka-depress, or you, you have lower self-esteem yes, or po. lower confidence sa sarili mo when people are trying to say something na not so favorable. Diba, Mark? Opo, ito. Yan. Yung tipong pag humaharap ka sa salamin, ano na pipil mo dati? Yan po. Na, alam mo na talaga yung may kulang sa'yo, which is yung nose ko po. Yes. And alam ko na po na yung security ko and yung sobrang nakakaingit po sa iba. Yeah, yeah. And hindi ako makapanwala na ako, ngayon ako na, ako na yeah. po yung may matangos na yun. Right. Kasi I was looking at the face of the Marian. Ang ganda. Actually, sabi ko nga sa kanya, ang ganda ng mga eyes niya. Ang ganda. The Thank brow, you, the shape of the eyes, the mid face, the lower face, chin, jawline. Naku, pang model ang <laughs> face you, ni Mar. Po. So actually, nang kulang na lang talaga is the middle part, the center. Take note, uh, I mentioned a while ago, it's the center focal point, key attraction point of our face. So ang ganda nung ginawang balance ng nose sa upper and lower face nagkaroon ng aesthetic uh, proportions ang ating face. So yun, yung sentro na yan, ayan, anterior projection of the nose the dorsum of the nose as well as the tip columella projection so when you push it or rather make it uh, forward or project it forward it gives that great impact on the overall beauty and harmony of our face. Yan. So happy for you, Mar. I'm happy as well din po, Doc. Sobra. Yan. Thank you, ha. So if Thank you notice, you know yung radix had elevated and then the dorsum of the nose had become more defined. So we gave this dorsal line or yung tinatawag namin nose line sa mga nagme-makeup. So they do this nose line effect here. And pagdating sa nasal tip, so somehow na minimize yung pagiging rounded or bulbous ng tip and we were able to augment the columella we were able to uplift upturn the tip columella portion so if you're gonna look at the nasofrontal angle nasolabial angle it's a lot better and somehow because of the pulling of this center na narrow ang ating alars and later on we can still add botox for the alars to make it slimmer pa because we have a thicker tissue on the ulnar region, we wanted to also target some of the ulnar muscles there to reduce them, reduce the size, and we can further narrow our nose. So these are non-surgical procedures. They're very safe. It gives you an instant result. It's a quick procedure. No downtime, I should say, okay? Or for some, they had minimal downtime. Some swelling there, soft tissue swelling, usually second day, third day, and then fourth day, fifth day, it's going away already. So some would notice some bluish discoloration on this part, the others don't have that. Okay, and in terms of uh, home care, okay, so make sure you always clean the tip, okay? No anything muna ngayon, dun sa tip area, because we made an entry point or a puncture point, and then just do ice compress. No heavy strenuous activities at home, and of course, hypoallergenic diet. 
and you could take some oral prophylaxis, antibacterial, and also pain medications. Yun lang! So, it's a very wonderful procedure that we have nowadays, the non-surgical nose reshaping, nose enhancement. So, this is a safe procedure. It's clinically proven, scientifically proven, safe. Okay, and the materials that we used were clinically studied. They were FDA approved. Yung iba kasi, yung una, yung tanong, yung masakit ba? Kamusta yung, ano, yung level ng pain or discomfort? Ayun po, Dok. Sobrang painless po niya. Nagulat din po ako. Yeah. So, it's like a painless procedure while I was doing mar inserting those PDO threads. Okay lang po siya. And then, the others are asking how long will this last? Okay, we've used hyaluronic and polydioxanone threads. So, we always say it's less than a year to a year. Now, the others still have it up to two years, so case-to-case -case basis then. It depends on your metabolism, on your environment, your genetics also, okay? And you can do a repeat of the procedure, like after a year, the others after two years, or the others even less than a year, like after three months, six months, if they still want it higher. Yeah, so marami tayong information sa episode na ito. This is actually a very educational episode. Okay, so wala nang tanong si Mar. Everything is clear. Everything is okay. So, yan. Later on, we'll still add a little bit of some Botox on the others para mas mag-slim pa. And lalong ma-perfect yung proportions ng kanyang face. And I think we're showing some before and after photos. So, if you have any questions, you may email us at csaskinclinic at yahoo.com. Our FB page, CSA Medical Aesthetics and Instagram CSA Medical Aesthetics. Our clinic is located here at the Infinity Shop, Francisco Gine Pomoseno Avenue, Pulong Marugul, Angeles City. Contact number 0933-860-9193 or 0917-504-4268. And our other topics are in our YouTube channel. Just type Contessa Salvador and please do not forget to click like and subscribe as well. Okay, God bless you all. God bless, Mar. When it comes to natural beauty, you can trust the CSA Medical Aesthetics.